Hi, this is the Monsoon Stories podcast from KJZZ. I'm Lauren Gilger. The monsoon season in the Arizona desert each year brings brilliant lightning, pounding rain, and powerful winds. And for a lot of us, it stands as a marker in our memories and a chance to start new. Each year at KJZZ, we take some time to explore what this season means to us all. And this year, we're looking at how it's changing and how climate change is playing a role. So far, we've looked at the ways the changing monsoon is affecting our wildlife and our cities and their potential for future growth. In episode four, we take a trip outside of the city to the San Carlos Reservation in eastern Arizona to a community farm called Nahuni Denjone to find out what the monsoon means for growing food in the desert and to the San Carlos Apache people. This morning, when Carrie Sage Curley drove up to the Nawudi Denjone Community Garden on the San Carlos Apache Reservation east of Phoenix, Eric Shin was already there. We try our best to get out there during the heat. Um, so I pulled in this morning and Eric was ready. He had beat me. He was already out in the field, you know, pulling uh, the wild spinach that we have growing along with the wild grasses. They're getting the garden ready for winter crops, Shin says. Carrots, radishes, lettuce, spinach. Uh, some peas. But this farm is about much more than food. It was founded in 2012 in an effort to give San Carlos kids a place to transition and rehabilitate after spending time in detention. What we're trying to do here is just create a holistic change within the community. Starting with gardening. Taking care of the land, growing food, uh, giving food away to people you know, what that does for someone, it could be really life-changing. Many San Carlos people suffer in what they call a culture of despair, the result of centuries of historical trauma and a bleak present-day economic reality. It can look like a lot of different things, poverty, substance abuse, domestic violence, suicide. But Shin says the change can start small. We believe things start very small, you know, so like something has... You know, just small as planting a seed in the ground uh, could be very meaningful, you know, and and you can see it with your own eyes. Like, you know, I look out the window into our garden and you see it just booming green and sugar cane that's like 12 feet tall. (laughs) And that all started with a little seed. And, you know, when you teach uh, the kids that and when you educate people and they actually are feeling it and in there doing it, sweating, we believe that that could really uh, inspire people and spark something. Uh, within them. And this year, the garden has been blessed with rain. So much rain. This year's monsoon season has officially become the second wettest on record, with the rain gauge at Sky Harbor measuring 3.44 inches, a full inch above average. For Shin and Curly, it's made this summer intense but bountiful. Boom, here comes all of us at NDC working in the garden and spinach higher than us, um, pulling them out and the pollen. And here comes our allergies kicking in. (laughs) You have the bees, you have all the pollinators. Right now you have all the butterflies coming out. It's a connection that runs deep for the San Carlos Apache people. Traditionally, you know, rain is always good. It's it's really good. Uh, As far as a a girl has her her ceremony and, you know, you're going to have her dancing in her frugalia with her cane, you know, facing the east and dancing. And if it could be flooding and raining, I've seen multiple girls just dancing through that. But it's going to make her stronger. It's going to make her prayer stronger. Now, modelers predict climate change is shifting our monsoon season, making it, like everything else, more variable and more extreme. And the last few years in the desert have been prime examples of the havoc that it can wreak. Last year was the hottest and driest monsoon season on record here in Arizona, and wildfires burned large swaths of the state. We were just surrounded by fires this past summer and the summer before that, actually. 
Now, this summer is one of the wettest we've ever seen, and that means flooding, with waters that are often full of debris that can cling to burned land. We had major flooding here in the town of Miami and in Globe and through the Pinal Mountain, and that's actually a sacred mountain to in there, the Apaches. And just having all of that coming down to Miami and doing its, you know, like the logging and all that destruction that was coming down, all the shrubs was doing damage there to the town, then came down to our wash and it's affecting here too. For Curly, it all means that the traditional cycles of harvesting the people have practiced for centuries are changing too. None of us were prepared for this kind of rain. We're really thankful for it. Um, we just don't know what Mother Nature is capable of, like global warming. You just don't know what's going to happen of what's a negative and what's a positive. You know, what's not growing anymore to like what's growing out of its time of season. Hmm. So everything's very off, especially working with the botanists here um, and two other local artists, hearing about our traditional cycle, the moon phases that we went off of, and there's just something that's off now, off, mm. off grid, and it's it's scary. It's like, what what is the future, what holds for us in the future if our cycles are off like this during the season? And on another level, Shin says the wealth of rain has meant a wealth of food for everything in the ecosystem. You know, the past couple of years when it was drier out here, we would get a lot more like kind of critters, groundhogs or uh, gophers, birds, and they would feast in our garden. Hmm. This year, we don't see as many, like we were even talking about it this morning, like Kiri was like, oh, Eric, like, there's not that many birds in here like last year. Cause they'd be picking at the seeds and you know we tried to plant some uh cover crop last year and the birds came and ate everything <laughs> but now it's like there's so much life everywhere that they don't have to come to our garden <laughs> you know for a meal they have there's plenty you know so in that sense it's it's pretty amazing to see how like this ecosystem just changes uh when when there is rain But even as the monsoon season changes and uncertainty reigns, they both agree rain in the desert is something to be celebrated. You know, you asked if there's too much rain. I think, I don't think so. Like in a desert, like more rain, the better. It's very uh, a happy time when it rains. And it's, you know, I think something that I'm always fond about um, is when the monsoon comes is when you have the blackouts and electricity goes out. Mm. Um, is just sitting in silence and listening to the storm. And I know my Che, my grandpa, taught that to my mother and her, you know, her siblings. To sometimes it's it's needed to just listen. And you know, I found myself doing that in the garden, um, just sitting on the soil and looking at the sky and hearing the thunder and you know, listening. I think that's what's so beautiful about the monsoon season. It's just to be grateful for that, that natural power. Thanks for listening to the Monsoon Stories podcast from KJZZ. I'm Lauren Gilger, and you can hear more episodes at monsoon.kjzz.org.